One, it's up. It's, oh my God, it's up. Still. Still up? Still the ones? We're still, oh. we're still here with you. Hey, it's still up. Well, that's good considering all the other things that were down today. <laughs> Talking to you, internet. Yeah, well, hey, if anybody's trying to get something on the iCloud or trying to find your phone. iCloud, you, Apple. Yeah, you can't solutions. find it right now. You know why? That stuff's down. Down detector saying down. major downage. Da -da -da. Aris Heller, thank you for the music, sir. I think he's up right now, actually. Is he on? Apex is down? What? Apex Legends is down, apparently. Who's saying that? Down detector. Really? Signals had some issues? Oh, not anymore. That Signals was, had issues. That was Look, earlier. Ever since people ditched Messenger and Mass. WhatsApp. Mass. Yeah. Signals had its its moments. All right. I'm, uh, I'm feeling jaunty. You feeling jaunty? If anybody knows where the word yes. jaunty is, let us know in chat. Jaunt. We're gonna go live here in ten seconds. Ready? Wait for the I, wait for the beat to drop. Oh, the beat's dropping. That felt like five seconds to me. That is really. And this feels like three, two, and one. How D March 29th, Monday, twenty twenty one. What's it going is, on? It uh, is. It is not your average show. Show. Show thirty one. All the shows. We're getting so old. <laughs> We're, yes, uh... we're, yeah, we are just getting ancient on ourselves, are we not? How are you doing today, Mr. Mr. Corey Young's doing in the well, studio over here? Well on the couch, no. holding down the couch. Roscoe's here. I don't know if you can see. No, you can only see his butt, like normal. He's, <laughs> he's here. <laughs> Roscoe is here. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Monday, of course. Welcome Monday, back to the week, uh, and welcome back to the show. Yeah, so, oh, holiday week coming up here for people who are celebrating, so lots of celebrations going on uh, in preparation for Easter or whatever else you got going on for your family. Uh, so we may or may not do a show on Thursday. We'll see. We'll see yeah, what our we'll holiday schedule is going to do. Yeah, that might be. I know we're also going to do stuff. Yeah, it's going to be pretty busy. So uh, just saying that, letting you guys know. And we got some follow-up stuff today and some interesting polls off of MSN. So I guess the recap is we got a poll from MSN about old video games, right? We got that. Yep. We got some stupid merch. We got um, mm. we got some Tomb Raider stuff. Yeah. We it's. I'll talk about it. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Got some V-Dub. We got V-Dub news -dub on the ID and, bus, uh, which is coming up. Yeah, and, and their Dune buggy. I know there might be some people that are, that know about the uh, old electric, uh, not, the old V-Dub Dune buggy that was really popular. Oh, yeah, the Maddox. Talk about the new version of that. Okay. And, uh, yeah, then uh, he's going to bring it back with uh, some Apple Watch stuff. Apple Watch stuff. Ooh, you know what's going on? Oh, you know what's going to go on? Uh, actually, if you're a big NASCAR fan, you did not get a chance to see any dirt racing this weekend because it rained in Bristol, Tennessee, so that race is going to be coming up as well. That's uh, that's something that I'm going to probably try to listen into this afternoon uh, just because something different. Um, what else we got going on? I think that's the main, the main stuff. Is Hopefully that the main can... stuff? Okay, so I want to pop in on one thing really quick because... It's just something silly that I, I did, and we it literally just got here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do that. <laughs> this is a silly speaker. It's called a Bugani, and I needed just a pool speaker, and normally I don't do this, but it came up so cheap on Amazon for like 49 bucks, and it literally, we just took it out of the box, and we listened to it for about three minutes, and you know what? It's actually not that bad. <laughs> Is that a brand? Let me I'm looking at this. I up don't know here. if it's a brand. It's basically look, it's it's you know, knockoff technology from you know other places. However, it uh we might have to do a product review on it because it was it was a total like out of the blue purchase. I have a JBL, JBL Extreme that I use for going to the pool or hanging out by the shower and stuff like that. And it's it's almost four years old now, and I was just looking for something to get me by until I either replace that one or check some other stuff out because I just wanted a decent portable speaker, even though I have, like, four other portable Bluetooth speakers. But this one just decided to be, like, one of those ones that I just picked up off the shelf. We're going to have to check it out. It's actually not bad. So, yeah, yeah, they got a few other products. They do, um, right? So what, what else yeah. do these guys got? Yeah, they've got? They've got these speakers that uh -huh. you wear around your neck. If you guys know those, like... Sometimes those speakers that are uh, you can answer your phone, but they also have a battery in them, and they go around your neck like that. Mm -hmm. They have one of those. Really? Uh, Bluetooth wearable speaker. Let's check this um, out. Waterproof. Oh, wow. IPX, IPX5 uh, waterproof. Oh, it's got a certified That's pretty cool. Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, 
And another speaker. So this is it. Like the, M- the M83. It's 60. Okay, I'm going to tell you this much. It's 69 here. It's 49 right now on Amazon. And this is not sponsored by any means. I just picked it up as like a... I think hmm. it's uh, 70 now as well. You might have got a deal. I might have got a deal. Ooh. It's 69.99 here with, on the M. Now, one of the reasons why I did pick it up is because you can pair two of them together into a stereo speaker, but. which is nice, which means I could put one on one side of the pool and one on the other side of the pool and actually have stereo without having to be- drag out my big speakers. And I was like, eh, for a whim, I did it. Okay. Sounds pretty good, though. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, cool. All right, so that's well, we might go into that later on, but I just thought that was really neat. Neat purchase. Uh, seems like it's fairly functional and has all the functionality that I've ever seen in other Bluetooth speakers. And if you're going to save yourself a buck, go for it. A dollar. And I've got so many Bluetooth speakers that I can honestly tell you it didn't sound bad. So that's there's that. All right, uh, what are we going to first here? Let me. Uh, what? Let me talk about the Tomb Raider thing. Oh, you want you want to go to yeah, because we'll, uh, yeah, that'll <laughs> that'll go into you can talk about video games after that. All right, hold on. So uh, go no no. Th- yeah, that. I, I do. Here, here it is. Hold on. It's coming I'll up. introduce it to you. It's, uh, I think you, you find it on Simon & Schuster, of course. It's on I Amazon did. as well, everybody. Just so you guys know, of course. Yes. It's on Amazon as well. Um, so Mike just showed this to me this morning. It's basically a cookbook, and it is a travel guide too, by mm-hmm. the way. Uh, but it's Tomb Raider. So it's a Tomb Raider-themed cookbook <laughs> and travel guide. Um, uh, being on Amazon, I tried to see if there's any pages you could find inside. You know, you could actually like, take a look and see what it looks like. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't find any. Um, mm-hmm. We can search, obviously, some other websites as well. It's uh, on here on Amazon, uh, not on an e, any e-form, but only for hardcover. $27. $27, bucks, right? Uh, yeah, $26.99, of course. Um, it's, uh, as it says, it releases here hardcover October 26th this year, so it's actually not out yet anyway. No. Um, speaking of that, I do know there is another uh, movie in the works. For them? Uh, for another Tomb Raider movie in the works. So that's, that's something that's also coming. So maybe maybe they're trying to plan this. Uh, maybe it would happen a bit later in the year, like together. I don't know. Obviously, or a holiday all purchase. Obviously, movies are obviously all over the place right now because of COVID mm-hmm. and everything. So that's a bit up in the air. Right. Uh, anyway. But uh, but anyway, it says it's got over 40 recipes uh, and uh, travel guides for the places she goes to in games. <laughs> I, I don't know. It just It just, reading about it, it might, I wonder what's in there and maybe it's, if it's kind of themed more like rugged meals, like okay. places that are, you know, like not camping, I guess, but kind of kind of like that, like more rugged. Right. I might be a little more interested, but I don't know, man. I mean, looking at it here, I'm just like, it's a cookbook. You didn't tell me any of the recipes. Mm-hmm. You didn't tell me any of like the places you're telling me to visit as far as. Uh, uh, I mean, is it even like done? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Okay. I don't, I'm not quite sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go off and launch on this thing really quick because the first thing is hey we've all played video games where you need to get the accessory book that tells you how to get through it like the Zelda games GTA oh, yes. Five right and that that makes perfect sense to me when you're gonna do video game merch I try not to buy those try not and that's me it, right or or, or you've seen like stuff like this before but but here's the do we really need a Tomb Raider cookbook? I'm going to go with no. And obviously the October release date, yeah, it might coincide with the new movie. But it also I, I is one know, of those yeah, things possibly. where, you know, if you're looking for a holiday buy for the person that needs to have everything Tomb Raider, I get it. But the official cookbook and travel guide of Tomb Raider. I feel like if you're going, I mean, okay, everybody out there watching, right? Mm-hmm. We, we also like the Tomb Raider games. We cool. do. We do. Uh, some of the graphics they had on the latest gen was really nice. Uh, and okay, great. Leave it. You know, that's fine. But it's a cookbook. Like if you're going to go places where Laura goes in the world, she mm-hmm. goes lots of places that are exotic. You might want a legit, uh, travel guide. that's <laughs> <laughs> not like centered around a cookbook. Uh, again, I obviously haven't seen inside because here I am at Barnes and Noble also trying to find out if I can see any of the inside of the page, you know, mm-hmm. pages to see what we actually what is this actually showing you? No, no information other than what we've already told you guys. So, forty rep- uh, recipes, twenty fifth anniversary. So it's actually the twenty so fifth anniversary version. Uh, I will say, hmm. I will say that uh, the wife and I are big Zelda fans, for example. Just a relation, right? Big Zelda fans, and I know there's like these collector books that I've bought for her in the past or us that are like collector books. They have art from the games. They mm-hmm. have little knickknacks that uh, apply to the game itself in that world. This also says it has some of the art from the games as well. So maybe maybe we should apply it to that kind of 
More okay. of an art collectible nah, kind of like thing. No, 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 no. An art collect. Okay, so here's the difference: an art collectible g book for a video game, just like you just said. If you're doing Legend of Zelda, if you're gonna do like an art collectible book, like I have the Empire Strikes Back original sketchbook from way back when, <clears throat> from like the nineteen, I think it was nineteen eighty two was when it was re released, and that's that's a collectible. I don't know if this I don't know if this qualifies in the same. The well, same again, I can't region. I can't figure out much about it. Hey, there's not much to figure out about it, but I, look, if you said Tomb Raider, original game art, concept art, and they had like polygonal models of the original Lara Croft dating way back to when, I'd be like, sure, that sounds cool. That's that's cool. I'm sold. I'm 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 buying that. Okay. If you turn around, and you tell me this is Tomb Raider. You know, every walkthrough of every Tomb Raider got game ever made with every cheat. I'm telling you, okay, that's probably a good purchase for for a Tomb Raider fanatic. But if you're going to tell me that you just came out with the official cookbook of Tomb Raider. Uh, and and travel guide of Tomb Raider, I'm going to tell in, you in a nutshell, the cookbook of Tomb Raider. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like know. the Halo the Halo cookie book. <laughs> make cookies, you know, according to the way Master Chief would have made cookies. <laughs> like, Master Chief don't make cookies. So, yeah, right. Uh, it's it's just cookies in the shape of Master Chief. I don't know. It just it's just uh, it's a grab. You think it's you think it's merch like yeah, you know, um, pl plushy Master Chief or sure. plushy just a, just something for you to buy because it's something for you. Because I just don't see that as being look. This is almost un under the same thing as the uh, NFTs, right? No, we're in N what is it? NTFs? N NFT. Non NFTs. Non fungible tokens. Non fungible to tokens. It's almost along the same thing about what will people spend their money on? A cookbook based on a video game Whatever character they want, I guess. with a travel guide. Yeah. I'm I'm sure there's a few people out there right now that are like, we're never watching this again. But that's okay. Yeah, there are probably people like, oh, I like Tomb Raider. I want to buy that. Hey, sure. And that's what we're saying. If it's something that you might think is cool, because I am trying. I am. We do like to cook at home, mm -hmm. so I was trying to like actually find recipes like let's, I'm, i want to check out a recipe from the book and try it i mean okay. why not but literally there's no you can't so i don't know fine fair enough all right but there is one other thing that did happen i guess should we go into the next one then yeah have it okay Studio so there is one stuff, thing yeah. we're making fun of this actually as an introductory topic to something else right okay. we know we look we know on the not your average show show we do things that are a little different from everything else because we have varying interests we do cars we do aviation we do old games we do lots of stuff right so MSN, if you're familiar with it, they turned around, they pulled out a poll, and their poll basically was about old video games. And they basically wanted to see in their poll they which classic arcade game is your favorite. And Ooh, actually, if you guys are watching in chat, tell what? us, like, Yo. literally vote in chat, because we're interested to know as well. I'd like to know, because here, here's the thing. The first one they gave you so a yeah, choice of Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Galaga, and Pong. Or something else. Or something else. And believe classic. it or not, out of 182,000 votes... Something else won. Yeah, I'm going to do something else too. Okay, because let, okay, let, let's first digest this one, right? Just a little bit more. Who, who's off that list that should have been on there? We're talking, but I think what they, what should be taken into account too, right? If you look at this, it's like classic. 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 Game, okay, classic. Right? Because if you, if you said, oh, you know, Zelda or, I mean, Zelda's not new either. It's got some history there. Sure. But uh, I mean, if you look at like Kong, Donkey Kong, we're talking like in the arcade, Donkey Kong. Galaga was in the arcade, but these sure. are all arcade games, like the machines, mm -hmm. like pure classics. Pure classics, um, right? Um, so, so if you look, I'd probably go Galaga on off that list. Okay, so me, I would have gone Pac Man because Pac Man was one of the all times, right? But now here's the problem: Pong is from a different era. That's what I found was the biggest issue. That Pong isn't it's the original classic, it almost is. like Space War, it is, right? So I don't see how that made it up against Galaga. Donkey Kong and Pac-Man, which are almost iconic in the sense that that's something else. But now the other problem is classic arcade game favorite. Are we talking like in the arcade? Well, then is that what they're implying? Yeah. Well, um, then I'm thinking. Well, there's Burger Time. There's Bartender. There's Gorf. There's Frogger. Like there's mm -hmm. Centipede. There's tons off that list that they left. Which which now it makes perfect sense why something else won. Okay, that that's that's interesting to me. All right, so let's go let's go one one step further into this conversation because they didn't stop there, right? They had a little bit more. So if I was going to say to you, Ooh, which classic video game console franchise is your favorite? What would be your first one? Me? Yeah, you. No, the other guy in the room. <laughs> you talking to talking to chat? I'm talking. 
or in chat. You guys tell me what you Talking think, but also Zelda. first you. Man. Dude, we, we love Mario. I mean, Mario's okay. got a ton of games, spinoffs everywhere. Okay. But Zelda fans. And I'm sure my wife would agree with you, Zelda, right? She's a huge Zelda fan. Yeah. So this is this is the big one here. We get Mario in there at thirty five percent, Sonic at four percent, Mega Man one percent, Zelda seven percent, and that's out of one hundred thirty nine thousand people, you know, ponying up their opinions. So that's that's an interesting one to me because console franchise favorite. There's something else still wins. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, what? What is it? So what? What? What is it? What's like the something else? Right in. And one thing maybe to point out as we're talking about these. Notice at the bottom, total responses. We're in the hundred, nearly a hundred and well, not forty, right at one thirty-nine. Almost one hundred thirty-nine thousand. Sure. Right. So don't think this is one of those. I mean, you go. Um, there's certainly some polls that you know people just they look at it and they're like, I'm not voting on that. I don't care. Sure. But. Yeah, 139. Zelda, 000? Zelda, Zelda. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, Brad's in there with Zelda. I'm with you, Brad. I okay. Mean, yeah. I gotta I gotta say this. Blast. There's notables. There's notables that are missing from this list. Huge notables. What's so a classic a console. Classic console that I would say would be up there that's missing. Halo. Halo. That's pretty classic. Okay. Master Chief would have to be up there and that he could probably be part of that 53 percent because that is a major franchise that was associated with the complete launch of a game system the original xbox and right? they got, do they is this uh poll include pc game they just say console because because i'm thinking as soon as you said that i'm thinking oh dang what about like doom duke nukem i mean they, not duke nukem um uh wolfenstein see pc see or now for doom. pc pc wolfenstein or would quake. be some people love quake Right, but there's Doom. not a favorite console franchise. Well, I guess, yeah, franchise would be Quake. So mm -hmm. Quake for the PC Doom would probably be right up there. Doom would be up there. So I think that this category... So whoever made these these polls, I'm not trying to knock them completely, but what I'm saying is there's some things on there that on that list that I would have liked to have seen more because there's also Banjo-Kazooie. Oh, geez, um, yeah. Who Earthworm else? Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim. Uh, and some ones that have a bunch of sequels. Oh, God. There's so many others out there on that list that have been left off. But if you guys think of any that are, anyway, that are left yeah. off that list, let us know in the comments below because we want to hear from you on that as well. So we can go one step further. They, did, they, they asked another set of questions. Okay, so now this one is aimed directly at our age group, I would say. Which is, do you still own any of these? And that, mean, that means consoles. Yeah, Contra. The there you go. James has got one in there. Contra, right? Yeah, that That's one another on big one. Huh? Oh, I'm going to bring it up in a minute. Okay, but, cool. but here's what I want to know. If anybody's in chat right now, oh, yeah, yeah. let me know what game systems you still have. Because I'm going to rattle systems, off. Systems, yeah. Okay, so let me, let me rattle off what I have. And then, and then you can all scream in agony and then tell me. what. So I have a, a TRS-80, an Atari 400, a Mattel... Uh, in the Aquarius computer, <laughs> I have a, uh, <laughs> this gets, gets bad. I have a 2600, <laughs> right? I have an SES, S SNES, a Genesis, a Genesis CD, the original PlayStation. I got rid of my Dreamcast, dumb move. PlayStation 2, a uh, Nintendo 64, a Jaguar, a, a 3DO, <laughs> and what else do I have? <laughs> and then anything else in the modern realm of video games. I've already got. Okay, that's part of my collection. Okay, and I know Corey, you've got quite a few of the same. I have a, I have a lot. I don't have quite as many. Okay. Uh, I mean, just name a few. Of course, we have SNES. Right. Regular, regular Nintendo. Mm -hmm. uh, GameCube. Sure. Uh, Switch. Obviously, uh, Xbox. I have the Xbox. The Xbox 360. Or Xbox One. Sorry. Xbox I don't One. Have, uh, I don't. I have my old Xbox. I'm pretty sure. One PS2. I mm -hmm. think my PS1 is somewhere. Um. Obviously, we had. Uh, all the all the handhelds we had the Game Boys, color Game Boys, Game Boy, mm -hmm. um, where the folds out. Then another one folds out. Then we had a color one that folds out. There's one that made the printer, right? There's one that had a printer. One that had that one. Right. I mean, there's all over the place. Okay, so yeah. we have all of those, right? <clears throat> so hey, and and if you guys in the in the comments below, let us know which ones you have, and if you'd like us to do an actual episode on the old console games, because I think out of all the ones, the most interesting is the Jaguar. Anyone with a Wii, we have a Wii. Oh, geez, a Wii. We have a Wii. Jeez, we have yeah. a Wii. Yep. Yep. We got a Wii. All right. So here you go. Here's the results of this one. We have two Wiis. Do you still any, own any of these? Atari 2600, 4%. Nintendo Entertainment System, 11%. Sega Genesis, 2%. Original PlayStation, 5%. And no, <laughs> no. 78% out of winner of nearly the same amount of votes of 139,000. I guess nobody's got any of those. 
So here's the most interesting thing, okay? And, I, and I'm trying to figure out why, why there's such a discrepancy between the amount of Nintendo owners, Sega owners that have held on to stuff, and the original PlayStation, and the 2600. 2600, I can understand from sheer age. The Nintendo Enter Entertainment System was solid state, meaning it's cartridge-based. It probably survived a little bit better than, say, the original PlayStation, which the original PlayStation discs. had discs, and their original CD player had a flaw, okay? So for some of them... But the Sega Genesis is also solid state, yep. but the Nintendo Entertainment System wins by a long shot out, outside of the no Nearly category. 10%. Nearly 10%. Minus the other uh, 78%. So then, then I guess we have to go back and see that Mario obviously took it out over Sonic in the, in the poll previously, so that, that kind of holds out for Mario <laughs> to be 35% over Sonic. So that's something it's of interest, right? So we want to know from you guys, what did you hold on to from your video game days? And what would you think would be one that should have been on this list? You too. Yeah, no, I'm thinking about it. I mean, uh, that feels like. I think so, Honestly, too. That was like, for, well, no, I mean, there's other ones. There was the, um, oh, what was Sega's handheld? It was color. The game um, oh god now you're gonna now you're gonna it's uh because i know the ataris was the Lynx. wasn't the game what was it called it was you better it was look it up now fairly wide and it was black, yeah 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 and it had a, it was cartridge based as well because then there was then okay because also the neo geo would have been one that i would hold on to maybe the coleco vision oh god i have also the original game not game gear. coleco telstar forgot that on the list game gear Game Gear. Game Gear. Right? Game Gear. So Game Gear was one of the first ones that was color, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, after obviously Game Boy, which was a company, right? Game right. Boy, Game Gear. Um, and I did play a lot of Game Gear. Right. Uh, and that was that was good. And obviously Sonic was on there, but there was also like Prince of Persia was on there. Prince. Of, oh God. Uh, I mean Prince some other Persia. classic ones. What was the one? The one. Oh, I also have a Commodore Amiga, which was had. All those great games by Psygnosis before they actually came out for the actual PlayStation, which was fantastic. Oh, man. So, hold on. There's, um, what's the one where the guy goes back in time from the Super Collider and then has to save those, 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 oh, God, they just did it, a new version of it for the, for the Xbox. Oh, God. He goes back in time, he drives his little car up, and then he's only got a phaser, and it's like something in time, but we'll, we'll check that out. All right, so here's the bigger question, right? <clears throat> Now, if I was going to ask you guys out there, are video games today better in the, than they were in the 80s or 90s? Or which one had better video games, I'd say, between the 80s and 90s compared to today? This is another question from... Yeah, this is... The, but I'm, I'm, it says, compared to today, 80s or 90s had better or worse video games right. or then a third option you don't know or you don't... What do you think? Who, who wins? The winner is... Better video games, okay, compared to today. Worse video games. And then 47% of people said, I don't know. What does that even mean? I don't... Like, okay, compared to today, you guys that are gamers mm -hmm. watching our show, right? Do you like games overall now more or less than you did in the 80s or 90s? That's kind That's of... That's kind of the question. Like, I don't, I don't... I mean... And so for me... There's obviously there's obviously some nostalgia with games that I grew up on, obviously because right obviously. of when I was young and when games we played when we were up. But I like games now. Games now that do different stuff, obviously than the games back then could. Obviously for mo for a lot of just technical reasons, uh, or, comp or complex, or you know, obviously just advanced. All the code is obviously. Um, I have very fond memories of Wolfenstein 3D. Right. Running through there. Uh, and that game obviously is not, not hardly as advanced as FPS games these days. So, I mean, I don't know. James says in chat, still got his PS1, PS2, PS3, this. X Bone Halo, 360 Reach, and X1, X6. Nice. Sure. Oh, I forgot about Reach, yeah. ODSTs. ODST, right? Oh, man. How about Zin? Oh my God! There's so many good games out there that I'm thinking about for the Amiga, and I'm really stuck on this one yeah. game. It's like something about time. No, it is what is another world. Another world was one of those games that I, I think. That one. Don't you remember another I world? I don't think so. Oh, actually. you got to check out another world. They still have it for the Xbox. It's fantastic. So, 
Um, so I want to know, what do you guys think? What was left out of these polls? Because, hey, I, I honestly think that today's video games are, are better by a different standard because I think the older games, you, you know, you were limited by one button. You were limited by maybe one control axis at a time on a joystick. There's a lot of different things that have happened in video games. So I don't think you can really relate between today and old games because obviously games today are better looking, more yeah. complicated. Uh, they have a different depth of storyline. However, one could say that Zelda has more intriguing qualities. A Mario game has more what would be the replayability and, and functionality in its gameplay because side scrollers still maintain you know, ultimate playability in some areas and you know speed runs and things of that nature oh, make yeah, them dude. highly popular. I'm just thinking you're just thinking about old games again. All right. We were talking before the stream uh, about mm -hmm. like Star Wars games back on old PC. Sure. Dark Forces, X Wing, TIE Fighter, Rebel, something like Rebels. Oh yeah. There was those games were pretty good too. I mean so, and uh, here, I'll, I'll give you a prime example. Do you remember Myst? I do remember Myst. <laughs> I do remember Myst. And <clears throat> Myst was a click-and-play adventure game, which mm -hmm. was literally, you went through, but they were all very, all very puzzles. well, yeah, they were well-rendered right. graphic puzzles, and it was basically almost like, it was almost like a website today, where you basically click through different scenes and yeah, scenarios, there, and it would yeah. take you to a cut <laughs> scene to the next one. And uh, you could probably do the same game with Adobe Premiere almost at this point. Uh, sure, yeah. Actually, you could do it with Acrobat, I think, really easily. Uh, but hey, that, that was another good one. Just to bring out another one. If you were going to compare something like X-Wing today mm -hmm. to Squadrons, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because EA Squadrons, which is their new shot at the Star Wars realm, which I love the game. It was a good game. I have it on my PC. Played yep. it quite a few times. Yep. Unfortunately, didn't have a lot of people to play it with, so... You know, didn't get a lot of shelf life there, mm -hmm. but uh, there's there's still I think it kicked the living crap out of everything in the old you know Star Wars arsenal. But that's, that's another just thing me. actually to bring up. Not a, not a question, but games in general that you enjoy that are multiplayer games, mm -hmm. or games that you enjoy that are not multiplayer games. Because right, some games these days are made to be multiplayer, and and likewise, some games are made these days to be like co op or sure online. I mean, some games are only online, right? And then there's games that are meant. They're really should just not be online. They're, they're first person uh, adventure games, and that's what they are. Ironically, so, you know, the first game for me that really did multiplayer, mm. Halo. Halo. Land parties. No, chat. no, 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 no. Land no. parties. Oh my god. Battlefield. Battlefield 1942 was the first game that I think I did m online multiplayer like regularly to the point where I was like, oh, now, you need more people in a room. Now here's a game. I don't know if Brad's still in chat, but I played a game with Brad over the air. Hmm. Descent. Oh Descent? God, Descent. Descent was awesome. Descent was the game. I do not miss the dial-up sound mm. trying to get connected at all. Mm -hmm. But Descent was. Uh before Classic. battle, before World of Warships, Task Force nineteen forty two. Mm -hmm. That was another big one back in the day. But we look, we could go on and on. We want to yeah, hear from games. you guys what you think about <laughs> yeah. we could carry We're talking on. for 20 minutes about Yeah, and uh, let us know in the comments below because we could always host another game game chat because uh, amongst the other things that we've done, which is both fly a lot of stuff <clears> and <throat> a whole bunch of other stuff, we're also avid gamers. Uh, obviously. Okay, we are, and it's just something that we do. And uh, lately we've been in, I've been into Circuit Superstars a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been back in Astro Near. Couple times, um, we've been playing uh, Onward in VR, yep. which is a shooter. Yep. Uh, so we're, we're we're currently into that. We still play World of Warships. Yeah, I got. No, oh, we got I mean, yeah, we way got too much. Something. We get, we got too yeah. much to talk about. Anyhow, remember, like, subscribe, follow. Let us know in the comments below what you think, <clears throat> and we'd love to hear about what games you think should have made the list, what console games, what characters, everything else that you can imagine. Let us know in the comments below. We'd be so uh, happy to hear from you. Uh, and with that said, now you're going to be happy to hear from Mr. Corey, who's going to talk about, uh, what are you talking about? So the next subject we're going to talk about is uh, another electric vehicle. This uh -oh. time it's from Volkswagen. It's uh, their bus. Now, if you guys, I know Mike's going to bring up the bus. picture. The oh, old yeah. VW bus. I know a lot of people probably th think of the old bus quite fondly. The old bus back from the, back, the original, the original, obviously petrol powered bus mm -hmm. this is the uh, electric all electric concept that was that was announced a few years ago back in 2017 
but now uh, originally it was set to be coming out in 2022 next year uh, from this video, of course, but next now it's been pushed to 2023. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys have been following kind of V-Dub's other electric vehicles, they call them their ID series, ID2, ID3. Mm -hmm. This one is going to be called the ID Buzz. Buzz. So mm -hmm. it's not a number, it's a, a, na a name, a, a buzz. Uh, so the ID Buzz. And it is an all-electric concept for their new micro bus, as they basically say. And so this is a pretty cool picture. I know Mike's got on the screen here. Yep. Um, I know uh, my wife's also fairly excited to see what this kind of looks like. Uh, actually, my dad mentioned it the other day. So it's pretty cool. We've got some people definitely you remember the old one a bit fondly and are still looking forward to see what this one will do. Uh, basically, what they're saying is that the entry level ID buzz for the U.S. market will be uh, likely rear powered, probably about 200 horsepower to those rear wheels mm -hmm. with an all wheel drive, 300 horsepower one coming a bit later um, in the U.S. There's just going to be passenger version. The European uh, proposed European version of this will be passenger, but also cargo uh, capabilities. And uh, apparently the UK one will are, you have a bit of autonomous technology kind of built in too. So we'll see how that works with that one. Um, but I also wanted to point out that uh, there's, they had announced their ID buggy, an electric dune buggy. Um, Actually, it, it's not new news. It was it was last year, but I want to bring it up again because obviously it talks about this article too. Sure. And I put that link in there as well for you to grab, Mike. If I don't know if you, I didn't uh, grab that one. Actually, yet. the link is in this this article from V Dub. If you go down near the bottom. Okay, hold on. That up too. Which one is this one? Uh, uh, right there. It's this highlighted ID buggy. ID buggy. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one. How did I miss so that one? So that's their new oh. newest. Dune buggy concept, right? That one. So it looks actually pretty fun, right? I would imagine that's the whole oh, idea of the dune buggy. It's oh, supposed to be fun, that's... electric, but also you know a fun vehicle to have fun with. And that looks like it's gonna fit the bill. That's obviously a concept. Mm -hmm. Um, I couldn't find any more new news about the ID buggy rather than he's got up now. So there it is. But uh, but as far as the bus is concerned, I'm uh, I, I'm interested to see what they do with it. Um, well, this is, I mean, first yeah, of all, looks cool. this is like, this one is the one that they debuted a couple of years ago with the buggy that they said they weren't sure if they were going to do it or not, but it's got a play button and a pause button, which is in the new, only the first 5,000 ID fours have that, mm -hmm. which is uh, a play and a pause button. But this one was the one that they basically took their, their pattern from the Manix. Okay. Which was yeah, yeah, yeah. the old Manix. Basically they, you got an old bug. You put a Mannix, uh, you know, dune buggy body on it, and that was it. And this was basically their throwback to that. And wow, uh, that is exciting to see this coming out. It's pretty cool. Kind of looks like the Polaris. Which one's the Polaris? Looks cooler than the Polaris. Oh, the Polaris. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, she's, I think EBY is talking about the, the three wheel something. Yes. I yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. But but, uh, but no, I, I think that the Dune buggy certainly looks cool. I hopefully we'll find some more information about that here in a bit, uh, and we'll we'll keep you guys up to date. But the uh, the bus one also looks pretty cool, honestly. I mean, I think they could sell some of these for sure. Oh, for sure. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm just interested to see. Actually, what do you think this would go for, guys? Like, if this was the bus, let's say it's 300 mile per 300 mile range, what would you pay for this thing? Mike, what about you? What you? What for? For the buggy or for the bus? We'll go bus first. Okay, so for the okay, hold on. Let me let me bring up the bus for a buggy. second. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the bus. I'm like I'm I'm over here looking at the bug the the uh, yeah, the, the buggy. buggy. Like, I'll pay anything. Okay, so for this bus right here, right this one, I would pay forty two thousand dollars. Around forty. Yep. That's now look. I know that that's going to be probably in the price range you would have to come out to be successful. However, if there is any vehicle that I think people have been in the Volkswagen like genre that yeah. really want to see yeah. this make a successful comeback, Electric this bus? is yeah, the one. Agree. Now the the U.S. market has been starved of the bus for probably the last almost what is it thirteen years since we've actually had the bus back in this they marketplace. Don't have yeah, they don't. So I would think that this would be the one, but I think forty two, forty three thousand dollars get you in the ballpark. A fully loaded one out the door at fifty. I think well, that I would do it. What do you think? I think 40. Yeah, obviously electric technology. 
it's it's one thing to mention as we're talking about all these electric cars from Volkswagen, mm-hmm. obviously that they also say in this uh, this art, the latest article that we mentioned also in the last one of our past videos, um, electric platform, right? They're gonna have one common platform for a lot of their vehicles. Sure. That will obviously be shared between VW, v- but also maybe some of their other other brands. These vehicles apparently fall into that. So. Uh, as Volkswagen uh, gets that kind of infrastructure supply line going, because they're going to build a factory, right? We talked about that in a previous video. Mm-hmm. Uh, as they get that all going, then that should accelerate uh, a lot of these concepts, um, possibly to include the buggy as well. But I know the van, uh, the, yeah, the microbus is pretty cool. So here's the thing, though. Now, the buggy, the buggy, I think you have a problem with. The only problem with the buggy is it's not going to be very useful in, in many markets, and it would be a direct competitor to places where people drive around, probably mostly in golf carts. And actually, well, Peck, uh, James in chat is saying it's a slingshot. Slingshot. I agree, right? So I think the dune buggy ah, yeah, yeah, could yeah, probably yeah. fit into that same kind of area where you have the slingshot, the Polaris. People that want a recreational vehicle. That's. Mm, I would be that hesitant. That has more off road capabilities than a slingshot. I would be hesitant right. because a slingshot, I think, is more of a performance-oriented vehicle than anything else. I agree, but I think this is this, this also would, the v, the buggy would fit more as a recreational vehicle, and I don't mean like you know, RV. Yeah, so I mean, but if more you, of a fun. If you're thinking the slingshot, okay. So for an open wheel, yes, I think you're right. If that's what you're just going for, open wheel, open air, yes, the Polaris slingshot is probably the one that would have to be priced against. But look. If you want an R edition slingshot, you're looking at thirty two thousand dollars. That's like top of the line. That's top of the line with auto drive, manual so transition. Yeah. So the bus, or, I'm sorry, the buggy. If it's gonna, actually, no, we're talking about that. What would be? I don't know. What would the buggy really be competing against? That's a good question. I mean, we're we're obviously looking at the Polaris and right and some other similar types of vehicles, but. Is the would the buggy really compete against that? I don't even know if that's really so. I I look market. at the I look at the buggy as something that if somebody lives in down in Miami Beach, Florida, right, and you live two blocks from the beach and you want to go to South Beach, you have one of these because it's a jump in at night to you and the wife, take off, go down the road to dinner, right? Yeah, that that's what I Get think. It? Or I think it's you know if you live somewhere here by the Space Coast and you want to go from here to the beach one day. And you want to take a 20 minute, 30 minute drive in this thing, you get this. I don't think it's in the same category as a slingshot. The slingshot, I see it as being too performance oriented, too fast. Those people want to go around a corner a little bit quicker than this. But then again, look, I also see the ID being completely as well in the same the bus? category as people that could take this to the beach. You know, yeah, oh, this yeah. is this is the ultimate almost beach going vehicle, I, right? I would have to say honestly, dude, I'd probably me, mm-hmm. I'd rather probably take the micro bus to the beach right. rather than the dune buggy. Now, don't get me wrong, the dune buggy looks awesome. Right. But I think you can do more and obviously store more in the micro bus than buggy. Sure. I see obviously now you can. Now, look, I would prefer myself if I was just going to get into the EV market. I would go obviously, you know, my first choice would be the truck yeah cyber truck cyber truck would be number one yep all right however barring if pricing for a cyber truck and getting a performance version of a fi- cyber truck couldn't get me what i wanted yet i could get this for say twenty five thousand dollars less mm-hmm. the practicality of this almost triumphs on all fronts mm-hmm. because you could get possibly a four ver- you know a four passenger version uh you could stick a lot of gear into this thing Put a lot of people in there if you need yeah to. it will baby obviously yeah so with the yep. sliding side doors you know if you're if you're a young mom and you've got two kids and you need something to throw them in as long as it's safe i think well, yeah, home run too, of course yeah huge no, yeah, home I run it's gonna be fun yeah i think if they can get that thing to market here and at least talking the u.s market here i think it'll be fine yeah for sure hey and you know what would be even finer like subscribe yeah like, share subscribe Could you, yeah like subscribe <laughs> like subscribe share subscribe subscribe share, share. Shrub, we'll do it. Sorry, Sean Connery. Like, it was a wonderful. Share. He was a wonderful subscribe. man. We can't make fun of him, but shrub share. Yeah, there you go. Uh, anyhow, yeah, sub, subscribe, and all that. And then Corey's here to take us home with one last. Oh no, no what am I doing? You, this man. One? Oh, it's me. It. Yeah. Oh yeah, because this is a caveat on on my behalf. My bad. Uh, <laughs> I'll just I'll have to own it. So it's funny because I also own a Volkswagen, so I have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> right uh anyhow one more thing here just so people know we're not we're not completely gonna rag on everybody but we're probably gonna rag on a lot of products today because it's interesting to me 
Uh, just This is from Bazinga, and I'm paying attention to what's going to be coming out to be the next Apple Watch. Obviously, I have an Apple Watch, and I want to get the new one. I want to upgrade, and I really enjoy it. You probably see it on my wrist all the time. I think it's a Gen 4 or 5. I can't remember which Gen it is, but I use it, and I'm an active Apple Watch user. Well, Apple is said to be mulling a watch variant aimed at extreme users. And what they're basically saying, and this is according to a report that Bloomberg cited familiar, that uh, what they're basically looking at is that a large percentage of their market currently is active extreme users, climbers, hikers, uh, pilots. You know, pilots use Garmin watches, but yeah, I, you yeah, know, true. a lot of people use these. Yep. And by doing such, they're looking to aim this one specifically at that market. And they say that that market almost makes up 50% of people that want to purchase a watch. Now, if you're familiar, Casio just launched another line of expensive, quote-unquote, smartwatches that do very limited smartwatch stuff and very rugged, you know, uh, G-Shock stuff on the regular. And they're looking at those being sold out completely down the line. So I'm sure Apple has taken note. However... I'm not really sold on this as a concept, and I'm going to tell you why. Because this watch, this is the stainless version of this watch, and uh, the Apple Watch, and it's pretty rugged in and of itself. It's got a sapphire face, and if anybody knows the difference between a regular watch face and sapphire, sapphire doesn't scratch. Sure, you could bang up the body of this pretty well, but I can tell you, you can buff out the scratches pretty well. But here's where I get lost. Why would you take a watch that's already pretty well standard for being fairly rugged in its own container and put plastic on it when I could go out on Amazon and for like eight bucks, I could put a plastic cover around my Apple watch? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the only thought there might be possibly mm. when they talk about extreme sports or they talk about like divers. What's the what's the depth on your watch? I think this one goes currently to, to 50 meters. My watch currently goes to 50 meters. And the only thing they're talking about here is they're talking about a, a rubberized exterior, mm -hmm. which would be less prone to damage than the current aluminum, stainless steel, and titanium steel cases. Extra impact resistance and protection. And well, protection. Okay. okay. So... I have knocked this thing into the side of airplanes, door frames, rocks, God knows what. I've hit the face on it so hard on, on a couple of occasions, literally on things that I thought it should have shattered. It never did. And I just don't know if you could have a more robust watch that's also attractive. Okay, that's the other thing. Yeah, I so, guess uh, since Apple is, let's be honest, quite good at aesthetics, mm -hmm. right? How, what does a rugged Apple watch even look like? Don't know. Is it still going to have that squarish frame, but good not question. be steel? It'll be rubbery something? So th is the screen still going to be touched? Obviously, it's still going to be touched. It has to. Obviously. I mean... Although none of them work underwater, so that's kind of weird. Um, I don't know. Oh. I, I, I just, just as we're talking about it, I have a, just a regular Citizen EcoDrive mm -hmm. analog watch, so it runs on solar power, right? But uh, not... I do have a smartwatch, but it's an old... an older one, and I just don't, don't use it much, so uh, this is kind of a little bit more in Mike's wheelhouse as far as wearables right. go, but I, I just... For me, I, I don't know. So look at this. This is a current G-Shock that's going for two thousand three hundred dollars, right? Two thirty, two hundred thirty. Two, oh, excuse me, two hundred thirty. But it gets a little crazier from there. My, my bad, two hundred thirty. <laughs> uh, they do have watches in their range right now in the Casio G-Shock range that are going for thirteen hundred dollars. So they're they're in the ballpark of what would be part of this this crazed culture of what would be. Uh, activity watches, right? Yeah, and yeah. and they are going, and like I said, Casio does have their new line coming out, which is going to be smart watches. They're going to have GPS, and they're also going to have heart rate monitors built into them. So, But then they do have $3,000 G-Shocks. Now, now, let alone, this isn't like a Submariner by Rolex or anything like that. This is a G-Shock. So for, that, for Apple to be going into this marketplace, I think it's kind of risky because... You could still get a decent, aesthetically pleasing looking Apple Watch, seven hundred bucks. Smartwatch too, and it's a smartwatch, and yeah, it because, does everything you need. Yeah. So for so, I, I want to know from people that are watching right now, what would you pay for, say, an Apple ruggedized watch, and is it even worth it? Are they wasting their time to just something that I could buy on Amazon, which is a four dollar clip, and it goes around the side of my watch? Yeah, anybody in chat, I guess, are watching this video now or later, right? If you mm -hmm. guys have an Apple Watch or would consider getting one. 
would you ever consider needing or wanting one that's more rugged? Yeah. Well, what about you've got one? You've got a smartwatch. I do. That's what I just said. Yeah, I do have a smartwatch. Yeah. And I, as I just told you guys, I don't I don't wear it too often. Um, I found that when I wore it flying, uh, sometimes too dim mm-hmm. to see in direct sunlight. I could right. use direct sunlight, so I just I just went to a solar powered analog watch with some digital functions in the in the display. Not this one. I have a Skyhawk, a Citizen Skyhawk that's also solar powered that does mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. That I used to use for flying and timing things and whatever else I needed. It was really actually it's great. I still have that one. Uh, it does not have a sapphire watch face, which I want to get replaced. Right. Uh, but but anyway, I mean, I I myself um, I find smartwatches cool, but I don't know. It just didn't. It never really latched on. Right. But uh, got the bugs. Let's. I don't know why. I see. Now I started wearing mine more often the more I traveled. The more I traveled, the more I realized, hey. Uh, one of the nice things about having an actual watch that updates itself to every time zone that you go to is that you don't have to go down and look at your watch and reset it. And that, that was beautiful. That well, was I mean, a great that's, thing. That's what the Skyhawk did too. So that was one of the good things. Yeah. He went places and just mm-hmm. figured it out. And... So I guess it's the G-Shock move is the other one that they're really coming out with, which is their next foray into the smartwatch technology area. That's, that's for Casio. Is that like elevation? It looks like it's, it's like going to give you GPS signals, okay, and location. It's going to give you heartbeat, and it's going to give you a couple other things, a uh, small amount of messaging and whatnot. And look, this is going to be $399. Actually, while we're comparing smartwatches that are rugged, mm-hmm. look up Garmin's. Now, those are Garmin's, different. I know, I know. But they've got some rugged, more, quote, rugged versions. Oh, yeah, they do. Not just flying ones, but I mean, you know, ones, and I think... I, my question was not to say that's what they're going to look like. The question was right that the market is. You think they're An going Apple someplace else? Rugged watch will be comp- hmm. watches such as. Oh, exactly. So okay, so to... let's take a look at this one. So they have a, a whole range. Obviously, Garmin Garmin's had smart watches for a long time. So they got their Phoenix. Okay, that's their multi-sport per function uh, function one. They also have. Their aviation watches are are world well, like they're known very very yeah. well the in the instinct. community. Is it the instinct? Is that the other uh, one? It's an outdoor adventure yep. watch. Yeah. All right. So let's see what the pricing on an instinct is. Three hundred ninety nine dollars. So if Apple really wants to enter this marketplace of a rugged smartwatch, they're gonna have to come in at three ninety nine. That's half the price of the regular watch, though, right? Yeah. So that's so, they're not gonna do that. Well, unless they take the aluminum version and then just wrap it in plastic and then call it a day, but then What's the I Phoenix? could do that. What's the Phoenix? Which one's the Phoenix? The Phoenix is their other, let's see, the Performance 799. I feel like that's closer. Okay, so so they got a, a Phoenix Sapphire is 649 bucks. Okay, so if you take a steel-cased Apple Watch, all right, no, leave it in the steel case because that's the only one that comes with a Sapphire, okay. and then you put a plastic addition on it. So now you're looking at 850 for an extreme Apple Watch. Uh, they might get that. Hmm. You know, you know, Apple, Apple people, know. they, yeah, they, they yeah. might That's throw I mean. that That's one I mean. out it there. Might work. I would wonder what you guys think, because I want to know if you think that this is going to be a great deal for Apple. I'm kind of, I'm on the fence. I don't see it. I think you get the stainless steel. And then if you want to get really active, you throw a different band or a different protective case on it. Call it a day. So who knows? Let us know, know what you think. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with that said, I think it's time for us to say it's it's time over. Adios. Adios for Farewell. the day. Uh, we will see you guys on Wednesday. Wednesday. And we're still... What else? We, not me. James just says not me. Not me what? Oh, not you for a watch? Not you. You're, ah. you're yourself on the watch. Yeah, you know, Apple watches are for... And smart watches for that matter. Look, there is one thing oh. that has to be said about a smart watch. Constant intrusions. You have to be really careful about what notifications you let come through your watch. True. Like, I make sure that email notifications don't come through here because I don't want to read the header of an email and be like, Ugh! and then be go back and have to read on my phone. No. I get, like, text messages, maybe my signal stuff, and maybe some alerts from the house. That's about it. After that, you know, I don't need to know. If you call me, yes, I'll pick it up on the, on the watch. And especially, I do like one major feature that my Apple Watch offers me. I used to, years ago, run with my phone in my pocket. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I that hated that. So I tried the bands around the arms, still hated it. Started, you know, the bands around the waist, still hated it. 
And that's also when I use tethered headphones, which I couldn't stand. Now I go for a run. I got this on my wrist. That's it. Earbuds in my, I got the Apple earbuds pro. They're nice. You know, the earpods pro they're fantastic. Go for a run and I'm done. So that, that's really nice. Got a free one Apple watch from my buddy. Hey, Oh really? There you go. That's nice. nice. Very cool. Very nice. Yeah, it's going to be time for me to upgrade in the fall, so it's going to be watch and phone, I think. So I'd like to, to be a watch and phone, but I need you guys to help us with that by liking and subscribing to this video. <laughs> <laughs> and let us know in the comments below what you think. Yep. Which, which watch would really be the one, you know, if you had the choice between, say, a Garmin, if you had a choice between that and, say, the Casio G-Shock, or if Apple did produce a ruggedized smartwatch, what would you think? I'm probably picking, a, I'd say, the Garmin Phoenix. I had to pick a, a rugged smartwatch. I'm, I was thinking because I've looked at them before and mm -hmm. just never pulled the trigger. Right. Um, uh, for me, again, I, I it's one of those things where I like again, as you guys know, we look at a lot of different stuff, a lot of different products, and I was in Phoenix and I said, but I don't wear a smartwatch now. Why? You got to get in the game, Corey. You got to get in the game. I have one. I just got to get in the game. You got to stay in the game. You got to you got to keep it on the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ah. Wow. There you go. All right. It's Monday. We're out of time. Hey, everybody. Get it? We're out of We're out of zzz, zzz. time. We're out of time. We will catch you guys uh, Wednesday. Have a great day. And again, like, subscribe, follow. We appreciate all of it, guys. Yep. And if you got a yep. chance and you're watching this video right now, just slide your finger over to the like button. Helps out the channel a lot. And just if you could uh, hit that for us, we'd appreciate it. Smack of that bell. Let it, it'll let you know when we're back. Mm. Um... Hit the bell. All right, with that said, everybody, take care. Have a great day. We will catch you later. See you Wednesday. Bye. 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 Ooh. Speaker back on. Get Harris on it. Ooh, we should. Well, we should. Turn it on first. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's funny how they say Bugatti like they want it to be Bugatti. I know. Oh, I know. whatever. I All right, guys. Thanks. We'll see you guys later. Take Bye. care.